What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Sorry I haven't filmed anything lately. I've been really busy. I got into real estate photography, so that's been eating up a lot of my time. And uh, today's topic is actually gonna be slightly different than normal. So I wanna talk about ways that you could kind of protect yourself or defend yourself if you have to go and photograph in really sketchy and dangerous areas. Maybe you're a photojournalist and um, you go to a protest and then it turns into a riot. There are certain things that you can do to kind of help protect yourself. So in my case, I had a real estate shoot in a really dangerous area. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did to kind of help protect myself a little bit. And uh, hopefully it works for you guys. And hopefully you guys have some ideas that you can leave down in the comment section below. So first things first, if you are photographing in really dangerous areas a lot, then you might want to consider getting insurance for your camera equipment. That's going to be the easiest way to kind of recoup your losses if your camera gets damaged, destroyed, or stolen from you. So definitely get uh, insurance on your camera. And again, this is if you're going into dangerous areas all the time or protests and uh, people are bumping into you or you, know, you have to deal with a riot situation. Uh, that's definitely a great way to kind of just protect your gear. Now, what are you gonna do with your personal belongings? For example, a lot of times when people get mugged, it's typically your phone and your wallet that gets stolen. So what I have here is fake money. Right now, it's just on a money clip. I'm probably gonna end up getting a slimline wallet with like a fake credit card and a fake ID, and I'll keep this along with my real wallet. So if I ever get mugged, I just hand them the fake one, and typically, People that are mugging you want to grab your stuff and run. They don't necessarily stay there to count in and check it. So you have some time to go and call the police after they run off with your stuff before they realize that it turns out what they grabbed is fake. You could also get a fake cell phone that looks like the real thing. This is my real phone, but I'm going to get a fake decoy phone as well. So when I'm in these bad areas, I have my decoy wallet and my decoy phone that I can hand off to anybody that tries to rob me. And as far as keys, um, I like to use a carabiner on my keys and that way I could clip it to my pants and it's less likely to get ripped off of me or stolen. But most of the time people aren't really stealing keys. I think like 90% of the time they're stealing your phone and your wallet. So we wanna create decoys and that way we could give it to you know the robber if they come up and approach you and and avoid escalating into a fight if you can now this will also help if you go abroad as well a lot of times tourists become targets so definitely have you know a fake wallet with some fake money in it and a fake phone as well um, now what if people escalate to the point where they want to you know do bodily harm to you then i'd like to carry some type of oc spray this is a brand called palm and um, it's very small, compact. It shoots for about 10 seconds, and the distance isn't really crazy far, but it's enough that you know if somebody's trying to fight you, you could temporarily you know mess with their vision with this stuff and get out of that situation. Now, unfortunately, I live in New Jersey, and a lot of city areas, it's very hard to get a concealed carry permit for a gun. So my next best choice is a compact knife like this. Um, there's so many different brands out there, but obviously I'll leave a link down below for all the stuff that I have out here. And this knife is really good because I barely feel it when I attach it to my belt and I can wear appendix style or on the ball of my back. And um, yeah, I barely notice that it's even there. And it is a fixed blade. I prefer a fixed blade over a folding knife just because you don't have to take that extra second to unfold the knife. Um, it's all ready to go. You just pull it out and you're ready to rock. So I like to carry this on me when I'm in really sketchy areas. And if you really want more protection, then you might wanna invest in some type of concealed body armor. This is two plates that I bought from Battlesteel and it's just Kevlar. And I kinda just did my own little ghetto rig uh, concealed body armor here because they're really expensive. So what I ended up doing was just buying two 11 by 14 plates and then I picked up these Velcro straps. Um, the, it's a little bit bigger for the cummerbund. And I put Gorilla Glue and Velcro on my plates and then I could wear this underneath a uh, plaid shirt. Now the reason I like to wear a plaid shirt when wearing body armor is it's so it doesn't imprint as much. It's very hard to notice when I have a nice, uh, usually a bigger size plaid shirt on. So typically if I wear a medium shirt, I'll go with a large and it does a great job. I can show you guys um, in this video 
but uh, you barely even notice it. I wore this when I was in Trenton doing a real estate shoot and nobody could tell that I had body armor on. And it's, you know, it's pretty bad in that spot that I was at. Even the EMTs that I saw on the house next to me, I guess somebody OD'd or something like that. And the EMTs also had body armor on. So um, it's not a bad investment. Like I said, it can get pricey, but um, I did this, I think for around 150 bucks, maybe even less. I'll put the links down below for everything I bought for this, but it, it's a little ghetto, but it works. The only thing I wanna do is add to this. Um, I just wanna put another strap that I could attach to my belt because when I sit in my car wearing this, it starts to ride up um, right into my neck a little bit. So I just need something to hold it down. Now, other than that, it worked really well. I know some people are gonna say, well, what about your size? Or if you get shot in the head? Yeah, those are all possibilities, but typically most people get shot in the chest and stomach area. Um, so this is gonna protect my vitals. Now some of this you might be thinking is overkill, but trust me, if I was a photojournalist going to a protest that turns into a potential riot, I would definitely be wearing body armor. I would probably actually sew in a pocket near my rib cage on my shirt where I would keep my actual phone and wallet on each side and then put my decoys in my pant pocket. That way, if you, ever, if you ever got knocked out in a fight, most people are going to be reaching in your pockets to steal your stuff. So you wanna put maybe your phone, like I have a case right here, and I could clip it onto my body armor. And again, it doesn't imprint very much. And uh, that way, my, my actual personal items are protected and people just run off with some fake money. And this stuff looks pretty real. So you could get this for like 15 bucks on Amazon. Um, so I'm gonna, again, leave all the links down below for you guys to check out yourselves. And if you guys have any recommendations to kind of help protect yourself further, please leave it in the comment section down below. So hopefully this helps you guys out. And I plan on doing a Milky Way trip soon, so just bear with me. I've been extremely busy, but uh, hopefully I get to go to either North Carolina, or I might actually go back up to Montauk to photograph this really cool uh, radio tower. So stay tuned for that. I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.